Ms. Mbola Tinubu has signed into law a bill seeking a 300% increase in salaries and allowances for judicial officials. In a statement, Special Advisor to the President on Senate Matters, Bashir Lado, said the increase underscores Tinubu's commitment to the welfare of Nigerian workers. In June, the Senate approved the bill after it passed a third reading. Lado also said the new act prescribes salaries and allowances for judicial officers to reflect changing realities. We're now being joined by lawyer and former president of campaign for the defense of human rights, Malaki Ugumadu, to look at this development and how it could impact this dispensation of justice in Nigeria. Good afternoon, Mr. Ugumadu. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here. It's great to have you, of course. Thank what do you, you mean, for the opportunity. Thank you for joining us as well. What do you make of this 300% increase in terms of how it might affect the dispensation of justice? Well, let us first of all appreciate that the, the increase is uh, significant in terms of uh, the percentage and as well as the impact. Uh, however, it has been long coming, but as the saying goes, better late than never. Uh, having made that point, I do sincerely believe that um, it is in response of a long uh, years of agitation, if you like, not essentially from the judicial officers, but from stakeholders. Uh, and members of, uh, I mean, all stakeholders who operate in the temple of justice, knowing that most of the noticeable challenges associated with the slow dispensation of justice, the poor dispensation of justice, and the failure to optimize the judiciary in Nigeria has so much to do not just with infrastructures, but with the remuneration rates applicable to them. And in fairness to the judges in particular and justices of the uh, superior courts, um, they were indeed poorly paid in comparison to you know, uh, state actors who operate in that field in other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So I think the first point to note is that that move is, uh, uh, smacks off some sensitivity on the part of the government, kudos to this uh, present government on that. It is reminiscent of what the present president, uh, who was a, a former governor in Lagos State, did with the judiciary in Lagos State. And that introduced a new vista, a new horizon that uh, impacted measurably on the justice delivery system in Lagos State, which became the hub uh, and a signature, if you like, from where other uh, states were coming to copy the template, as it were, in enhancing justice delivery system in, in the country. Now, but it doesn't stop there, in my humble view. Yes. Well, it is a remarkable, uh, a remarkable leap. Yes. Yes, I'd like to come in here just, you know, because of time. When we speak about the expectation of performance, this 300% raise, of course, is in, it looks like it's in the right direction. We're seeing the president urging judicial officers to redouble their efforts in delivering swift justice. So do you think this salary increase will realistically lead to faster case resolutions, or are there other structural factors that need to be addressed first? I like, I like that question, and I was just on my way to land on that. To say that it is not sufficient to throw money at the crisis in the justice sector and think that that will obliterate every other aspect of the challenge. There are institutional challenges. There are issues of funding. There are structural challenges. There are even constitutional challenges, particularly regarding the appointment procedures in the, uh, of judicial officers. And all of these taken together will achieve the results sought to be made. However, we're making the point that the first leg of it has been largely attended to. What that does is that it now speaks to the 
very challenging aspect of corruption. By this move, if properly implemented and monitored, you would find that judicial officers, and make no mistake about it, there are very wonderful judicial officers, judges and justices. In short, they are in the majority. But those in the minority who have painted the judiciary dark by way of malfeasance, misconduct, all bordering on corruption, we now have no excuse, even if they didn't have any previously. But with this move, it will be completely unacceptable to think that there can be any justification for any judicial officer who is found wanting with respect to corrupt and corrupt, corrupt practices. And on that now, note, um... again, when I say structural, it is that the judiciary is self-regulatory when you talk about discipline. And that is where the National Judicial Council comes into play. The National Judicial Council will now have very limited space to tolerate people who are involved, I mean judges who are involved or who continue to indulge in any form of corruption or the other. So okay. that has carefully taken care of that in the hope that uh, all of the dimensions of corruption will not rear up its head if we have barely thrown money at this situation. In terms of appointment of judicial officers, we have made the very clear point that the way our constitution is structured and the overbearing power concentrated in the National Judicial Council, who superintends the entire process, and in most cases extends their powers up to the appointment of judges in respective states, must have to be looked into. Why? It is that where you, you know, concentrate those powers of appointment, essentially in the hands of one person, all right, that Mr. is the Chief uh, Justice of the, of the Federation. Uh, unfortunately, we're, uh, time is fast spent, but thank you for doing justice to those questions in the short space of time. Um, former CDHR President Mr. Malaki Ugumadu, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsday. <laughs>